Hey gang, it's everybody, Plant. Today we're continuing on our spirit series. Uh, today we're going to take the next step from the O to V, Aqua Vitae's we talked about last time, who that were non aged, distilled one time, uh, very base spirit. Uh, today we're going to talk about neutral grain spirits, also known as grain neutral spirits or rectified spirits. Um, and where we take the next logical steps from O to V's is rectified spirits, spirits are distilled multiple times. Uh, they're more pure, they're higher proofed than those O to V's that we talked about last week. Um, very simple, this is a grain based distilled product that hits roughly 190 proof around 95% alcohol by volume. It's not always sold at that. Each state kind of has the limits on how high you can go. Uh, some states will sell it at 190. Um, most of you may know it as Everclear, but there's other brands. Um, some states it might be 175. I know some states 150-ish is about as high as they'll let you go. We're just going to talk about everything that's about 150 and higher. That's a uh, you might hear a term overproof spirits, but it's not just grain if you've ever heard of it. Uh, Bacardi 151, that's an overproof rum. So anything 150% and higher though, that's grain basis, kind of what we're talking about today. Um, there's also something called grape neutral spirit out there. Not a big thing in the US, but it is out there. If you ever see it, this is the grain version of that. Think, think of it that way. Um, we talked about in the uh, O to V video the different types of stills pot stills coffee stills column stills column stills are the most industrial stills and that's what gets used for this um, they create the highest proof spirits also the pure spirits and uh, that is what when people produce grain neutral alcohol um, that is what they're striving for um, these are generally done in an industrial setting um, by the major ethanol producers and I want to make sure you get that term right we're talking about ethanol here and not methanol. Um, even though it's done in industrial settings and this and around by way kind of an industrial product, it's still ethanol, the type of alcohol you can drink compared to methanol that is the one that makes people go blind and go crazy and all the, the stories you've heard about bathtub gin and stuff like that. That's methanol. This is ethanol. Um, Speaking of which, a lot of the neutral grain spirits you'll see out there are produced by the major ethanol producers like ADM, Archer Daniel, Midland. Um, also, a lot of this gets produced more in the Midwest. Uh, I know Kentucky and Tennessee are known for their whiskeys. In the Midwest, um, you have, the, of course, the Grain Belt. And in those areas, you'll see some of these ethanol producers. Um, I believe Indiana's a big home to a lot of these ethanol producers, and thus it makes sense with all the corn and other grains in the area. Um, this product can sometimes be what's called denatured because it's so high proof they can be used for other things, industrial purposes. They don't want people trying to drink them, so they'll do what's called denatured where they add poison in there to keep you from drinking it. That being said, neutral grain spirits has a lot of uh, different uses. Uh, if we were in Brazil, it would just go into your car, to, you know, as, as long as we keep it as a higher proof possible, not, not the more watered down version. Uh, also here in the U.S., it's been blended with gasoline for the E85. I used to have an E85 car. And I do remember my dealer telling me, I think it was Ford was going to go to a car that could run on 100% ethanol. So if we had the highest proof ethanol out there in the market we can pretty much put in the car and uh, let it go and I have seen I have seen where people put in their lawnmower and let it rip before so we're, we're talking about potent stuff um, it's been used to clean uh, engine parts and again has other um, if you wanted to produce like tinctures and stuff like that um, this is great for that um, however, though, if you take neutral grain spirit and you cut it with a little bit of water down to 80 proof, if you cut it with like distilled water, you've got vodka. And that's why this is the backbone for a lot of vodka. So a lot of the commercial vodkas you will see out on the market are actually, the, the companies will, will buy bulk ethanol from 
a company like ADM. They will bring it to their facility, cut it with distilled water. They may filter another time, maybe even run it through their still. And then, voila, you got vodka. Um, and the reason why this industrial product is so good for vodka is because the the quality point in vodka, you know, like if you're talking about bourbons and scotches, well, how long has it been aged? If you're talking about things like brandy, well, these certain grapes or the regions, you know, it came from. Other, you know, gin, well, what's the different botanicals in it per se? But vodka, the, the base selling point is how pure is it? How many times has it been distilled? How clean is it? Well, if we're producing something to go into your car, we're obviously going to make it as pure as possible. And so if you take that base and then add just pure distilled water, you got to actually quality vodka. And uh, again, they're both grain, you know, spirits. Obviously, potato vodka, we're talking about something different, but grain-based vodka, probably, probably neutral grain spirits, probably might be the best way to go to produce something like that. Um... Also, too, neutral grain spirits can be used as a base for blended whiskeys. Let's say you had a few barrels of three and four year old whiskeys and some caramel coloring. Throw a little bit of this in, now you got a blended whiskey. Um, if you have the grape neutral spirit we were talking about earlier, uh, that could be a base for a, a more like your local store brand brandy. Obviously, it has nothing to do with cognac or armagnac, but you know, a cheaper brandy, you can use that grape neutral spirit. Um, if we were to take a neutral grain spirit, cut it down a little bit, add some botanicals, or either when you're running a series of three or four distillations, or somewhere you add some juniper and some botanicals in there and the still with it, now you've got gin. Um, if I want to add a lot of sugar to it, maybe cut it with a little bit of water and a ton of lemon peels, now I've got limoncello. Um, if I was doing a rye-based grain spirit, and I'm in Germany, and I want to throw some fruit, maybe a little bit of sugar or something. Now I've got schnapps. Um, here in the U.S., if I wanted to make some kind of crazy different liqueur, a bubblegum liqueur or whatever, I would want a base spirit, you know, where I get my alcohol. I'd want that as clean as possible because I obviously want that bubblegum flavor to stick out. So, again, I'd use a, a neutral grain spirit for that. So it has a lot of purposes in the spirit business not just again not this is not something like a like a good scotch you drink on the rocks but this is a base for a lot of other things um this would not get used for bourbons or scotches for many reasons but one it comes off the still too high bourbons and scotches i know bourbons for sure i believe it's 160 proof as high as that could come off the still they want to keep some of that flavor, some people say impurity, some people say flavor, that uniqueness. Um, a lot of your scotch and bourbon guys will not use a column still because they don't want to strip out too much, so they're not going to get that high of ABV. So this is not something you would see blended into either one of those uh, products. Uh, but if you do have a bottle of neutral grain spirits and want to make different liqueurs, it's great for that. I'll throw in a video link to my video on making limoncello where I used a bottle of Everclear which is a neutral grain spirit. Um, the particular one we're going to, I say try today, I'm going to do the straw test, I'm obviously not going to take a shot of this stuff, uh, is the Volkoff 153 proof grain alcohol comes to us from Princeton, Minnesota. The distillery was founded in 1912 and just by looking on their website I see they do a variety of different vodkas and a different liqueurs and again they create the base and a lot of these companies that produce something like this now have gotten into other product lines because hey we've got the base now all we gotta do is well let's add a little sugar here well let's add some flavoring here now that's a flavored vodka because we kind of you know it gives them great versatility to add product lines so let's give her the straw test Ah, yeah, that's high proof. Um, not much taste there, just a burn. Um, again, this is not something you drink on the rocks. Don't do shots of this. Don't, don't play around with it. Again, if you're going to get a bottle of this, use this as either to make a homemade liqueur 
or I guess if I was 23 again and had a five gallon uh, cooler, well, a bag of ice, a couple of two liter bottles, lemon lime soda, maybe a can of fruit punch and one of these, party time. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. Well, until next time, bottoms up.